Malcolm, dicks and butts and licking nuts and fire explosions blowing up. Get the KY and the talcum. Here comes Kevin right on Malcolm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blowhard. Hello. I was gonna. You you couldn't hold off. Look at how you're so excited to talk. You've been absent for a while, haven't you? Well, you haven't been around. There's been family turmoil, so I've stayed away from uh, doing a, a show. Good idea. Let it settle. Good idea. What do you mean? That sounds vaguely threatening. Good idea. No, sometimes it is good to just let the dust settle. Anyway, and you I'm Malcolm friendly Ingram. Again. This is my mother, Gloria, and this is going to be an interesting blowhard because we're going to talk to you, and then we're going to talk to Brian Johnson, who is coming down next week to do a live blowhard in Toronto on May 22nd. We're doing a live blowhard at the Marijuana Lounge where you went to, and there's some talk about the show that we did at the Marijuana Lounge. That you got a little high. People think you got stoned. People think, uh, well, that's not very good because that was my norm. I don't think I act stoned. If you listen to the podcast, it's pretty funny because after a while, your your mood kind of changes. You lighten up a lot. Well, the people that were there maybe responded so well that it was easier to. You won't, so you won't, you won't, you won't maybe give it a little bit that maybe it was a pretty smoky room. It wasn't that bad because people uh, went outside when I said I didn't like to smoke. They didn't, uh, no, don't insinuate I was affected by that. I wasn't at all. <laughs> okay. You're giving me that look of like, all right, cool it. Yeah, cool it because that's not true. You want to go through your entire life. Having said that you never got stoned off weed. I never got stoned. All right. Maybe next time. Never got Would you smoke a reefer not, with me? Would I'm you not smoke? going back there. I told you that. That's not where I feel comfortable. All right. I said I would do it again. But, but would you have smoke a reefer with me one day? Because no, you have pain. No, no, no. I like to know what I'm doing. I enjoy wine. Why should I have anything else? But, I don't want anything uh, but else. But there's an argument that people say, and I, I you know, that... Pot is better for you than wine. Doesn't taste as good. It depends. Makes food taste better. If I've gone this long in my life and I haven't had it, I'm not interested. You know what? I can't argue with that. Good. I, and I would say that pot affects some people. To, I don't think pot, long-term pot use turns people into assholes. So I have four kids. All right. And they give me enough. All right. And I smoke <laughs> enough weed for both of us, so well, it's okay. There you go. That's not good either, but there you go. It's going to affect your mind eventually. Mom. It's going to affect your mind. I can see it already. Well, you can see my mind's been affected by the marijuana cigarette, the jazz cigarettes? Yeah. How has my mind been affected by the jazz cigarettes? You lose your temper very easy. That's not weed. Weed mellows you out. Weed makes you mellow. Well, okay. Anyway, I don't... Uh, it's, not, it's not something I ever got into, though. The reefer. Were you ever tempted? Never, 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 never. We've been at parties where they had it, but I've never, ever, You've ever been You've been at pot parties? Oh, yeah. But I've never been tempted. Your father either. We just were not into that. Well, dad was, uh, dad was a good Catholic man. I had nothing to do with it. No? No. No, no, no. I think either. Jesus would have smoked weed. I'm sorry? I think Jesus would have smoked reefer. Oh, let's get off that subject. It's not that interesting. No comment on whether Jesus yeah. Christ, our Lord, would smoke because reefer? Because it doesn't even deserve a comment. So, Why, you're saying the, the good Lord wouldn't smoke reefer? Malcolm. Yes, Mom. I'm change asking, the subject. You were asking what we are talking about. Change you the asked subject. Me, you asked what we are going to talk about. And I guess what we're going to talk about is... I'm we're, going to a movie tonight. Where am I, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> change the subject. What do you want to see? I'm going to see, uh, I forgot, what am I going to see? The I recommended that you go, I thought it would, I, I, I sent you off to the Fast and the Furious. Okay, what am and I going to And when you come see? home tonight, you got to give us a little review. Okay, what am I going to see? The Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to move on to. See, see yeah, you know what, that would be wicked if you smoked a little reefer. We wanted to go see Arthur, but it's on too late, so. 
So you're gonna go see? Well, you were asking me what to go see, and I thought that I will let you know when I come home. Well, yeah, and we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. I'll tell pick you up. what I did go and see. I went to see Water for Elephants, and that was very good. You you like the Reese Witherspoon pictures? Uh, she's very cute. I liked him. the The movie is good. The movie is interesting, and also I went to see the Linton Lawyer. And I liked it so much. It's it's a movie. That don't be has, raving about the, don't be raving about no Matthew Conaghy pictures. Come on, Glow. Well, you know, I'll start talking. I'm you not, want to talk no, about no, Reaper? Listen, listen. That I'm not crazy. Loves his listen, Reaper. I'm not crazy about him as an actor because I always think he was a pretty boy. But he was. You don't like the pretty boys. He was very good in this movie. I bet she was stoned, very good. I bet she was stoned during that entire performance. He was very good. It, so, was, it was a very good movie. It so, was very good. so you know what I did? Then I Googled the uh, the writer because he writes mysteries. So now on my iPad, I read my books. I gave you an iPad. I'm so thankful for that. Kevin gave me an iPad for Christmas. I didn't like it. The only thing I used it for was for dating sites. I got on Grinder and Scruff really quickly. And Grinder and Scruff is this application on your phone that lets you um that it tells you how close guys are to you well maybe i could use that mom it's for gays it's for gay dudes i guess i won't use that no you shouldn't use that but that's the thing and and uh, so i was on grinder and and i had no when i after i gave you my ipad i completely forgot to uh to clear it off so i had my gay crew sites there and i think you found some pictures of me didn't you well, I looked at them and I thought maybe I should join that group. Good looking guys on there. Unfortunately, I had some pictures of me partially clad that I had taken for some people that you saw that. They weren't bad. They were just your chest. There was a picture of my ass and stuff. I don't remember that. You know how mortifying this Like, I'm actually being. I've actually had two weeks of my own mental therapy dealing with the fact that you saw. On the iPad, photos that I used for cruising. You have no idea how much that screwed with my head. Why? That I brought you up. Did you bring me up to cruise on gay chat sites? No. Is that what? You what know, do you think you about? Know, like, you know, you know, you know. Just a minute. All right, I'm waiting. Didn't you tell me today that you're corresponding with your old girlfriend and you're anxious to see her? Yeah. Well, are you sure you're gay? What? <laughs> it's an off, off, off in the distance. My sister's out is laughing. Yeah, mom. I uh, like. I'm pretty sure. Or, I've had enough gay sex with men to to. Yeah, I, I I've joined that club. I've had a lot of gay sex. But it doesn't mean you're gay. I think sucking a dick makes you gay, mom. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, listen, there's something going on. I just talked to a friend of mine who's working on a dog show in Kitchener. Mom. And she would like to have a husband. So I said to her, gee, there must be some good-looking men there. She said, yes, they're all good-looking, but they're all gay. What, around a dog show? Yeah. Yeah, that's where you'll find a lot of the gays. Why? Because they can't have children, so they treat their animals like their pet, like their uh, children. Like their dogs become their children. It's really gay. And I'm using gay in the pejorative and not in the dick sucking way. But yeah, it's pretty gay. But I, like, yeah, but, I think it's good. I but gay it's men good. kind of obsess about their animals because they become their children. I, I'm looking forward to seeing Krista. I've talked about this on a previous show. Um, I, I, I'm very much looking forward to Krista. If if we decide to have sex, I'm happy. I, I, I like women. I have no I have no real issue. I, I get a, I, um, my sexuality is pretty fluid. I could I, I'm attracted by both men and women. Uh, why I'm explaining this to my mother, like that's the problem with having a, 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 a podcast, Mom, is because you end up having these kind of conversations with your mother. So we had a good day today. We did. Well, we're going to finish talking about Krista. So yeah, so I, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to see you like Krista when I dated her and stuff. We always like Krista. Krista did a couple of trips with us when we went to California. Yeah, yeah she, she always we, fit in quite well. But she's in Australia. She is in Australia. Malcolm. 
Well, I'm going to Austria because I... I ended, know, I know. You're go- because you reached your goal. I re- and with your Congrats. help. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Isn't that my great? Kickstarter on, my Kickstarter, uh, we, yeah, I hit my goal. Congratulations. Holy shit, right? I think that's fantastic. I know. Uh, now, 22, we're all looking forward 22, to following you when you're making that movie. $22,000. Uh, 22, People Isn't were good it? enough to... Uh, it was... Uh, it was uh, yeah, I'm telling you one thing. I don't want to sound like a jerk because I don't I don't want to see a guy who sees the negative side of things. I was really touched, like genuinely touched because when you go when I you know, I went over and I looked at all the people who ended up giving me money and it was wonderful. There's some wonderful people. Um some people I'd never met before. Some really interesting like filmmakers like um uh, John August, the guy who uh, the guy who wrote a movie called Go, and he re- wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Great writer. He's written some really really great stuff. What did he, he write? He wrote uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the movie, oh. the screenplay, and he wrote one of my favorite screenplays ever, the screenplay Go. Um, he, he donated. donated who donated money? Wow. Uh, Dean DeBlois, the guy who um, the guy who uh, direct wrote and directed How to Train a Dragon. Yeah. He gave money. And but, we, but have the funny thing is, we have a deal. We have a deal. Okay, let me finish. Let, okay. me, let me look at your... Okay, you, okay, go, go, go. You're bigger than me. I'm what? You're bigger than me, so I'll let you go. So since when has that ever stopped you from trying to dominate me? Okay, what are you going to say? I was just saying I don't want to focus on the, the names. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of people who gave. There was oh, like, you know, over 100 people and, and, you know, various amounts. Every dollar helped and, and you know, and everybody kind of... You know, when you have a stranger, somebody you've never before, never met before, gave you money. It, it was amazing. I mean, and it was surprising the people. There were some people who I was just like, really? They didn't? Because I sent emails out to my friends and stuff and people who had kind of, you know, people I'd worked with before and, and uh, they weren't. Uh, I was surprised at some people who just didn't even. It was nice. Some people actually just, you know, if they couldn't afford to give money, they. They sent along my information. A lot of people... Yeah, I thought uh, like that my was friend, nice. My I noticed that too, that some people said they were sorry they couldn't do it now. Uh, but I think that's good. So maybe next time they'll be able to, but I'm sure they'll come and see like the movie. Friend, and that's important my too. My friend, you remember Alonzo? Alonzo Duraldi? You met him in Miami? Yeah. He he was really good. He he kind of passed it along a lot. Um, uh, my friend um, Dan Etheridge, who's a really great guy, he kind of passed it along a lot. There's a guy, Gavin, who uh big, big supporter of a lot of the View Askew things. He, he was very good. There's a lot of people out there. I don't want to forget any names or anybody. Everybody was really great. And I'm very much looking forward to making this movie and kind of moving forward with it. Um, and it, it, it was, yeah, it, to do it, it was it was an incredible experience. To, that Kickstarter thing was really wonderful. And good. thank you so much for being a part of it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But we have a deal. We have the Ben Midler thing. Yeah. But we got to, I, I don't even know if Ben, ben Midler might be like, who I know, you? I know, I know. Okay, so when are you starting your movie? I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna start making this documentary. I go to Australia in the middle of June. I'm gonna have to tape a blowhard. It's we're on. We're on. A, Kevin has got a radio station now. You're gonna. You're gonna be on Kevin's radio station called Sir. I'm gonna be on it. Yeah, it's how come? Sir Internet Radio. I guess that's what it is. I don't how, know. How come I'm gonna be on it? Because the, apparently we we play. I I haven't really been following all that much the the, uh, the Sir thing, but apparently. He started a radio station where him and his wife sit in a room in the mornings and they do a morning show from, from the house. And it's a radio show. With Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, nice. How are we going to be on his radio because show? Because they, they, uh, the well, Blowhard is a weekly. Kevin has been, uh, Kevin has been generous enough to have us be one of the, his, uh, seven podcasts that's on weekly. And so, we go now. We have a spot on the radio show, where the, the the weekly podcast goes on the show, and we're and we're one of the weekly podcasts. Well, I'm one of the weekly podcasts. So you're gonna go see Fast and Furious. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna hear back from you twice tonight. You're gonna give Brian advice on how to do the show, the live show at the Pot Place, and then when you come back tonight, we're gonna get your review of Fast and Furious. Okay. The Fast and Furious. So, we're gonna okay. hear, so you go get ready and stuff, and then when I talk to Brian, we're gonna give you you're gonna you're gonna give him a quick a quick pep talk on doing on doing this live show on the twenty second. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for just so we'll be hearing from you twice again. Okay. Thank you talk for joining us. Talk to you later, Flo. everybody. All right. Thank you, and uh, we'll be back with Brian Johnson. Hi, 
Brian. Hey, Glow, how you doing? I'm doing great. I understand I'm here to take some pointers. Oh, you want to know about the club where you're going? Well, you have to understand, I was on tour this summer with uh, Smodcast and Tell Em Steve Dave, and I'm used to only the finest high-class establishments. So you come and, down a uh, few pigs. Oh! <laughs> well, will this will this keep me grounded? This will bring me back to the roots? Uh, depends on what type of roots you're talking about. But, but <laughs> the people are friendly. Okay. Uh, There's a lot of weed. Yeah. So will, I, will I, I have to I, worry? I, I hope you enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy the people. I. It's not the kind of place for me, but I don't know you, so I don't know what you'll think. <laughs> you'll have fun with Malcolm, I can tell you that. Have you ever gotten attacked by a drug-crazed hippie while you were there? I'm sorry? Have you ever been attacked by a drug-crazed hippie in this place? Have you been attacked by a drug crazed hippie? No, 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 no. People were very nice. Okay. And as a matter of fact, when I said that, uh, you know, I did that, that the smoking and that gave me heartburn, they really cut down and then went outside to smoke. So I think, mm. I, I think that was very nice. A couple of people still uh, kept at it, but I didn't, it didn't bother me at all. <laughs> so they're mostly accommodating dope fiends. Okay. Well, that, sounds, that sounds like I can handle it. Oh, you can handle it. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy it. The people are nice. And uh, it's different, a little different. It's not, why, an why, it's not an environment that I'm comfortable in, but you might be. That, that's why you're bowing out? That's why you don't want to do the live show? Uh, no, not in that location. I really am not comfortable there. You'd rather do it on a cruise, right? Oh, now, yeah, now you're talking. <laughs> or if it were like a, a Sex in the City convention. Uh, I'm sorry? Maybe if it were like a Sex in the City convention. Yeah. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, if Malcolm ever changes, you know, I wouldn't mind doing it, but I'm not comfortable there. But good luck with it. I'm sure you'll have uh, a good time. Glow is What's boycotting. Really? So I, I was second fiddle again. Anyway. Second fiddle to glow. I hear you're coming to. You're going to go to Niagara on the lake. <sighs> Thinking about it. Oh yeah. Going to get, you, get my you, romance on. You should uh, Google Niagara wineries, and go to a couple of the wineries. What if I don't drink wine? Would I still like it? No. <laughs> Come on, dude. Make make it like a an up north sideways. A Canuck sideways. You have to understand, you two. I'm more of a pillhead than anything else. Do you have any like uh, any uh, any, any pill mills up there, like they have in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to the wine bees. Okay. <laughs> and with that, I think Glow is out. We've lost Glow. Thank you very much. Glow is off to see Fast and Furious, and she's going to be back with a review later on. Fast Five. Fast. Oh, that's. I keep calling it Fast and Furious, but it's Fast Five. Actually. What's up, Johnson? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. Welcome How's everything up there? I'm back. You're back. Yep. They dragged me back to Pucknuts this week, and now I'm back to Blowhard. Oh, dude. You. You know what this is? It's. It's your slumming uh, week. I'm like the poor man's Kevin Smith doing nine different podcasts a week. <laughs> Except you don't get to fuck your co-host. I don't. Well, you know, yeah, that's what you think. <laughs> Ming's Ming's not as strong as he looks. I've overpowered him several times. Really? <laughs> Apparently, you just uh, what was what? What did you guys say? If I fucking hit it? Oh, Walt was gonna hit me over that with what? Oh, a champagne bottle. Champagne bottle and a fire poker. Yeah, you gotta watch it if you want to take Ming's uh, on because you got fucking <laughs> Walt to tend with. Yep. Walt doesn't like that. Nah, he's not just going to stand by idle. Let that shit happen. Is there going to be a backlash if you're doing blowhard as Walt? Like, what does Walt think of you coming up to Toronto to do a blowhard? Uh, he hasn't really said much, but I think both he and Quinn are like, oh, wait a second, you, you you don't organize any live shows around here, but you're going to go all the way to fucking Canada? Really? To which, yeah, for me, it's just like I got in, you know, you asked me if I wanted to do it. It's already set up. I don't have to do anything except show up and talk. So that's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect setup for me. I think we should do it monthly. 
Once a month, huh? That's, I mean, that's a lot to. I'm, I don't want to fuck. I know pilots show your play. You get you know freaky freaky, but I, we'll see how this <laughs> one goes. But I I think we do a month because there's been some good. Uh, we've sold a bunch of tickets. There's still tickets on sale. Uh, you get them at MalcolmXXXL.com. Yeah, I announced it on uh, Tell Him Steve Dave this week, so we'll see tomorrow. We'll see how the uh, how the Canucks react. Really, you announced it on Tell Him Steve Dave. Yeah, did a little uh, a little promo for us. Did everybody just fucking roll your eye, roll their eyes while you were fucking doing a promo? No, actually, they weren't there. It was just me and Ming did it. <laughs> Ming did a promo. Yeah, we did it on. We actually we recorded it on Puck Nuts, and but I'm putting it on Tell Him Steve Dave. I got a couple hot seventeen year olds coming too. Is that all right? right? Yeah. What's age of consent there in uh, Canada? Shit just got awkward, dude. Um, I think that it's sixteen. What? Why? You- all right. Well, the, there's they're seventeen. All right. I just want to make sure that when I make my move on them and they shoot me down, if I go to jail, they're at least you know that it was all it was all in the up and up. Yeah. I, I at least had a, I at least had a, had a, had a one percent chance. <laughs> I think that you're legally. Uh, you're legally within your rights to be shot down by these hot 17-year-old. How, like, how, how did you end up getting these 17-year-old girls involved? They're, uh, they're in a band, a Tell Em Steve Dave uh, fave uh, Canadian band called uh, Courage My Love. Two girls and a guy named Dave. Courage My and, Love is uh, the name of a, of a, of a store in uh, Kensington Market. It's a, they're little hipsters then. They might be. They're really good. Like for their age, and I mean, you know what? I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even going to qualify it. I'm not even going to say for their age. They're they're like a really tight band. And, you have and any it's, their music? Uh, we played one of their songs on Tell Em Steve Dave one week, and uh, they got a real favorable reaction. Should we play a little clip of their music now? Uh, if you can find it, I, it, which is it, probably wouldn't be that hard. They have a website and everything. I'd play a little clip. All right, well, here, we'll, we'll, we'll give them a shout out. We'll give give people a little taste of now, and now we're going to be on a radio station, I guess. So we, you know, people will be listening. We're like real DJs now. We are. We're, spin, we're spinning discs and shit. <laughs> Here's a little courage, my love. Try to cross, you always manage to get lost. I've been waiting patiently for you to come and find me. This is hide and seek in the dark. Now it seems you've got your mark on me. This will never change. So, what else is going on, motherfucker? Uh, not much. Languishing in Jersey. Uh, listening to the Sir Radio Network. <laughs> Are you? What's uh, that a little like? Bit, a little bit. Was it like listening to it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I tune in a little bit, listen to what they have to say, and then tune out. It's a very good application, though, the Stitcher application that oh, they use. It? Yeah, it actually works pretty well for you know Kev's network, and then there's other stuff on there, too. I heard uh, through Quinn... That uh, our show, like Tell Him Steve David, was going to get cut down to 57 minutes because it needed to fit into like a slot, I guess. Like the the way they do the radio show, the Sir Network is like it's very everything's very plotted and everything is very structured, you know. And uh, our show isn't like that, you know. Tell Him Steve Dave, we we rarely, if ever, you know, hover around the hour mark. It's usually an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. And we were uh, we were told that we needed to cut it down to 57 minutes uh which sort of sucked you know because i like more of the free flow uh style that we've been using and uh you like to you like to do a podcast as if it's a, like a, an improvised jazz concert yeah you mm-hmm. the miles davis of miles uh, davis yeah, that's exactly it man i'm we're the, we're the allman brothers of uh of podcasting you're, you're like, Just, you like to do the slow groove Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so we were ready to abide by it and I announced it and I, a lot of people were sort of unhappy about it and, uh, posted as such. And then I think Kevin changed something. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I saw that he announced actually again, Quinn contacted me and said that Kevin announced on Twitter 
that uh, we would be allowed to run as long as we wanted and we didn't have a time limit anymore. So just as quickly as, you know, we were boxed in, we, we broke out and uh, spread our wings and fucking took off. There you go, man. But tell him Steve Durbin, uh, tell him Steve Dave Bird took flight. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think Kevin just changed some a couple things that made it so that that didn't matter if we were fifty seven minutes anymore. Well, that's awesome. I, I I never got I never got that 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 notice. So I guess, I guess they still like fucking Lord coming in at a, at a trim fifty seven minutes. Although we were <laughs> we were never long though. Well, we're coming up on like we did a an auction. Like we went to the auction one time. You know, like the flea market. Yeah. And uh, uh, those are actually regarded. It's kind of sucks because those are widely regarded as our best shows. Like it was a two show series. I remember you know? one. Yeah, yeah, when you went to the flea market. Yeah, and those are both around uh, three and a half to three hours and forty five minutes long, like each one. So, you know, if we were about to go back and uh, revisit the the auction, so if we were to try to do it the same way, you know, that would be like a seven fucking seven part show that, you know, with the one hour time limit, but we don't have to do that now. Will you do another, like even, will you do another three hour podcast? Oh, sure. Yeah. You're I mean, we fucking, probably will. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I got nothing but time. What else am I doing? Uh, that's true. I mean, I guess, but three hours, who wants to, are you out? Leave your keys. Bye mom. Enjoy, enjoy the picture. It's not called the Fast and the Curious. It's called Fast Five. I've been corrected. <laughs> enjoy it. My mom is off to see Fast Five. Fucking, I'm, I'm alone in the house now. What should I do? Oh my God, you're like fucking Tom Cruise, dude. You'll be skidding around all over the place with your Ray Bans and socks on. Oh, totally getting hookers, but I'm telling mm-hmm. you, doing a podcast with your mother uh, is, is not uh, is not an easy thing to do. No. I wouldn't want to do it. Well, it's kind of, you know, my mom's kind of, she's an interesting character. God love her. Uh, but if my mom doesn't want to fucking talk about something, she'll just stop. Like when um, me and my mom were, we, we had a big fight around Easter. And um, and I came back and I had to record. It was so funny. You ended up doing the podcast instead of her. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much for doing that because she fucking was like, we sat down to the podcast, and I brought something up, and she literally put the microphone down and crossed her arm. <laughs> like, Please tell me she said harumph. <laughs> Dude, there was nothing about her that wasn't saying harumph. It was, it was pretty intense. I got my own glow. It's, it, his name's Walt Flanagan. Um, that, that, that dude does everything but cross his arms if he doesn't want to talk about something. What's the one thing that Walt won't talk about? His family, like, he won't talk about his family, right? No, he talks about some family stuff. Uh, his big things are, like, anything that's going could potentially be offensive to, uh, to uh, you know, like, he doesn't like to offend religious, you know, like, uh, you know, religious types. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't like to talk about graphic sex shit, which, you know, I don't, I'm not, that's not really my thing either, or Quinn, so... You know, we should, it, 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 we're we able to strike a balance. It all works out. So Blowhard is just not a show for you. Oh, no, but I'm fine with it. It's just like, uh, I, I'm not offended by it. But it's, it, our conversations, like, are, they, they just don't, they, they just never get there, really. Not to say we don't talk about sex shit at all, but not, you know, generally not in detail. But I don't do that in my regular life either, so... I talk about sex a lot. I mean, I talk. The thing about it is, I talk about sex. Some, I mean, some people say the people who talk about sex the most are the ones who aren't getting it. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's true. No, I, I mean, uh, I'm a gay yeah. dude, so we, we, maybe when you're young, like maybe when you're young, like when you're a kid. Yeah, gay sex for a, for you know for a gay dude is 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 ridiculously easy. Yeah, we did a uh, we did a commercial this week for uh, we we put some extra content on Bandcamp.com. Are you familiar with that? No. It's uh, Bandcamp.com is basically like a lot of like musical groups will put their albums on there, and people can go and buy sort of like iTunes, I guess. Um, 
but uh we put like we do a lot of charity podcasts and shit and uh you know so we have some charity pods and some other stuff that's never been released so we put it on bandcamp.com and we sell it so that uh we can raise some money for our merchandise you know uh and people go and they buy the file for you know dollar or two or whatever and we were doing a commercial this week and we were trying like pretending we were calling a dead person and we said you know we were like well who should we call and i said uh call me i said i'll pretend i'm osama bin laden and those guys wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, even Quinn, huh? Well, Quinn, I guess in the Yoria, uh... he's a fireman, you know. He's like, you, it, you forget that people have, you know, something to lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would argue that both me and you have nothing to lose. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm ready to go on there as Osama bin Laden, and you know. Talk a bunch of stupid shit, but you know. Well, 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 okay, let, then let me hear you. I want let me talk to the ghost of us <laughs> about Bandcamp.com. <laughs> yeah, we can do the bit here. <laughs> it was a whole thing. There was a whole thing. We have so we had sound effects. We we actually uh, videotaped it too. We got a YouTube channel. Tell them tell them shit. Tell them Steve Dave. I think or tell them SD. I can't remember, but we we're, we're getting all sorts of stuff going. <laughs> We have you guys uh, are the thing, but it is you guys are three. I'm like I'm four even because Ming is kind of uh, Ming is like the fourth. Ming's our guy. Yeah, Ming helps us out quite a bit. I don't have any. I do my. I do everything myself. Yeah, you're a fucking lone wolf, dude. I know, but I, I don't want to be alone. You got to find someone. What about Warren? I thought Warren was your guy. Oh, that's Warren and Sean are actually both my guy. You know what? That's that's very true. Warren, Warren and Sean are fucking, uh, they're both amazing. Like, well, um, Warren kind of, you know, he did the posters and stuff. He kind of is the uh, the creative guy. And then Sean's kind of the cut man. Sean's going to fucking, uh, Sean's probably going to be cutting my next documentary. Oh, yeah? I yeah, did you make a, was... did, you, did you raise all your money for that? I did, and I raised a little extra, a little, little extra something, something. Nice. I was very happy about it. I was very so happy you, about it. Now you're ready to go. Did I read it correctly? You're going to Australia. I'm going to Australia. I'm going to go. I'm going to Australia to film, but I'm also going to be seeing my ex girlfriend there, Krista. Huh. I don't know her. Oh, you don't know. You don't know her, but I, I think I don't know. I might try to have uh, the straight sex again. Oh yeah, you're gonna go for it. Well, why, yeah. I mean, she's, she's a good, good girl. I like her. Why not? Yeah, I guess so. Just close your eyes and pretend it's a stinky brown eye. You go for it. Because <laughs> that's the only place that I could find love. It's something stinky and brown. It's the stinkiest place you can imagine. Exactly. That's where I find love, man. That's where I find and the love. least appealing color. So what? What can people like? Uh, we're fucking. Uh, what, what are we gonna get? What are we gonna get going for the show next week? I don't know. I was thinking about that today. We don't normally like. That was a big thing when we were doing our our live stuff. I never wanted to plan ahead. Like I never want, I just wanted to go up there and, you know, make shit up. Cause that's what it is. It's improv, you know, like when we did the, the, uh, Hollywood improv, like I thought the idea was that we would just go there and make up shit as it, you know, as it went along. Um, but we did that in Brantford too. And when we did our first live show ever in Brantford, uh, I had a couple ideas, but I didn't want to tell anybody like Quinn or Walt, you know, they're like, come on, dickhead, at least give us an idea of, <laughs> you know, so they're not, it's not totally off the cuff, but you know, that's the nature of a podcast. You sit there and talk. It's not a, it's not a scripted act. It's not a practiced act, you know? That's it. I mean, it's, you know, I'll have some notes though. I'm going to, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get, you know, them to ask some questions. I'll have some, yeah. some listener questions. I figure everybody's going to be so high, too. They'll just think it's good no matter how fucking unfunny it is. Dude, it was so horrifying doing this fucking show with my mother at this place because you had no idea if it was going to get busted. Imagine <laughs> if it got fucking... Like, I'm sitting there doing a podcast. I mean, in the end, like, Kevin... The best piece of advice that Kevin ever gave me, and it's very true, uh, he said, um, the greatest thing about doing a podcast is that now there's no such thing as something bad happening to you because everything is a story. Yeah, he told me that too. And there's an element of truth to it. Like, 
Um, I was talking about it earlier with my mom. I gave my mom my iPad. Like, Kevin gave me an iPad for Christmas, and all I used it for was to fucking cruise gay sites. Right. So I gave it to my mother. But I gave it to my mother, and I didn't erase any of the shit from <laughs> when I had used it. So my, my mom, I found out very casually... Uh, my mom very casually let me know that she found this whole fucking fo- file of photos of me. Of you? Yes. In so you put pictures on the iPad? Undress and fucking, you know, posing fucking randy photos. You're striking poses and sending them to people? Uh, just for my profile and stuff and to, to one of the guys that I know, yeah. There was erotic Erotic, uh, uh, some boudoir photos. Oh my gosh. Some gay, so Glow <laughs> ran across gay boudoir photos of her son. Why didn't she just erase them and not, not mention it? Like, why does she got to bring it up to you, you think? Because she's my mom? Because like, cause she's evil? Like, that's a, the thing about <laughs> it is, is that, like, I wish she'd never mentioned it. Like, the cool thing. And I said to her, like, when she first told me, like, we talked about it today on the podcast. And it happened two weeks ago. It fucked me up for a week. Like to think about it made me wince and mo- like it was just, it was, it, 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 I was disgusted. Disgusted with her that she was looking, or disgusted with? I was, I was just really fucking. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting like, pause. <laughs> what? That was an interesting pause. <laughs> I never thought of being disgusted with myself. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing about it is, is like my mom saw pictures of like my fucking bare ass and all. Like it was, you know, it was just horrible. Were you doing the typical poses, like the fucking like putting your finger up against your lips, like shh, this is naughty, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I mean, one step I mean, away like from that that. that. that like goatsy pose where like guys stretch their assholes out so it's like a foot across and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Like a pro, pronated AA hole and all that crap. No, I didn't show her my fucking rosebud of a fucking, you know. <laughs> that would have been the worst if my mom fucking just saw me on all fours with my fucking asshole just splayed out into a fucking disgusting fucking anal rosebud. Yeah, it's like inside out and shit. <laughs> fucking your intestines fucking dripping all over the floor. <laughs> well, that was the funny. <laughs> I realized before. Um, like in the fucking advent of the internet, um, how I didn't before I realized everything, every conversation shit that I was I had I ever had was saved until I learned how to fucking clear the cache and shit. I'm mm-hmm. um, like I would use the family computer and I would have some of the most disgusting, like repulsive sexual convert, like just really shocking. Like when I was like you know 18 years old. When your no. fucking hormones are going fucking crazy and you fucking, you know, maybe not 18, I guess I would have been a little older than that. But seriously, just had fucking disgust. And my father, obviously, because my father was a snoop. My father was a guy who would fucking, like, if there was something to look at, he would look at it. Really? No and privacy, I think back huh? Now it's some, of the, some of those conversations, and I think, like, my poor father must have just sat there and gone, like, I fucking had a boy. I raised him. I raised him in the church. I raised him. Learned, thought, you know, learned him right and wrong. And did my best by him. <laughs> my son is a fucking my my son is a fag pig. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like uh, it, it's not like uh, oh my god, my son's gay. Like really, who gives a shit? But it's like he's a fucking deviant fuck up who's who's talking all this fucking gross shit, like uh, like, like ultra graphic fucking sex stuff. Like my talking dad, about his rosebud. <laughs> yeah, like my dad was fu- my dad was essentially party to my fucking my my potty talk. Yeah, and now my mom has been fucking seen. Like, dude, I'm I'm a just a fucking mess. You haven't fucking learned, man. You haven't learned to clear that shit off yet. What's wrong? Well, I I was you know what I fucking, fucking gave it to her. Hell even, is pa- is paved with good intent. Like it, it's not like. like it's not even like she just picked it up and was like, oh, oh, let me see what this is. Oh, Malcolm. <laughs> it's like you fucking handed it off to her knowing that all that shit was on there. But I didn't think about like I didn't like again. I didn't know <laughs> that the whole thing that fucking your photos from your um, I didn't know that all the photos from your um, from your MacBook 
instantly got transferred to your iPod. I had no idea. What is the most embarrassing thing you've been caught with? That I've been uh, by anybody or yeah, just like what's your most embarrassing? Oh boy, it would take me a little while to think about that because I don't really get yeah, I don't get embarrassed that easily, and I fucking know how to clean off a computer so people don't find shit. So fuck yourself, <laughs> bragger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have those experiences where you know my parents are constantly finding these bizarre photos and shit. I'm all right. No, I don't, maybe you know what? I'll try to think of it, and uh, if you go to our live show on the twenty second, I'll have it for you. You'll 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 save it up for then. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure something out. There's got to be something there. All right. Are you excited to come to Toronto? Like, what do you want to do when you come up to Toronto? I don't know. You know, I mean, <clears throat> the, the, I mean, I haven't been there in quite some time, so I forget what's what's going on in Toronto. You know, last time you came up here, weren't you robbed? Uh, yeah, actually, when me and Walt did the Comic-Con, some fucking crazed Canucks smashed our van window and stole a box that, um, it was a computer box, like I had just gotten a brand new computer, and I took the box and I filled it up with these, uh, t-shirts, then they were actually Tell em Steve Dave t-shirts, that, you know, it was just like a, a crudely drawn picture of me and Walt, and we were trying to, like, blow them out because nobody was buying them. So the, uh, so when they fucking smashed, like, they thought they were getting a computer, obviously, and when they got home, they had a fucking array of sizes of fucking Tell em Steve Dave t-shirts that we could hardly give away at the time. Really? So uh, the, yeah, and they left shit like they left my passport on the dashboard, like they left other shit that would have been way more valuable. But they thought they had a computer, so they, you know, they took off with it. And I, that it was, oh, it would have been worth it. Like if I could have been a fly on the wall at their fucking hideout, like at the gang's lair and shit. Like they crack it open and they're like, "Hey, let's fucking, uh, you know, we're gonna sell it or, or let's at least take pictures of ourselves and then erase the history so our mom doesn't find it." <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, just to their, their disappointment, like their utter deflation when they open it up, they're like, what the fuck, eh? <laughs> Shirts. <laughs> who tell them Steve, what, who, who's this Steve Dave anyway? What if somebody from the gang comes to the show to fucking be like, you caused us embarrassed. You right. That was our most embarrassing moment. Now here's yours. I don't know what they would do to embarrass me. I mean, shame me in public for not being able to sell the shirts that bore my image i don't know <laughs> <laughs> now you but now you do you guys have shirts that you sell now uh no we're 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 working on a couple things right now like i said uh, after our, we we're making some money on Bandcamp and uh we're going to use that to reinvest in some shirts and stickers and you know i, I don't want to get too like cheesy and shit with the merch you know I like stuff to be more functional and cool and, you know, not necessarily like inundate them with, with stuff. I don't, I don't think we're popular enough anyway to, uh, to carry a, a huge amount of, uh, you know, or a huge line of merchandise. I mean, I was about to say, you do know whose network we're on, right? Yeah, but people might not necessarily buy it just cause we're, uh, you know, cause we know Kevin. No, no, I'm just saying that man is the king of putting someone on a fucking piece. All props, fucking okay. respect to that dude, man. That that dude took a page out of George Lucas' book and ran with it. Hey, are you going to come up for Branford? I don't think so. I've I haven't heard one word about it. And Ming Why said don't that. Why you uh, fucking come up and do, we'll do a live show at Branford? Uh, maybe we could do that. Isn't that like the next week or something though? Is it? Yeah, I think it's like the very beginning of June. Is it? Yeah, I think so. I'm going I'm on the sure. web and I'm looking. Um, because dude, that would be all. Like, we, obviously, we wouldn't play that fucking big barn, but I'm sure we could. There's a pubs there and stuff. Pub? What are you talking about? Last year we sold. We played to a thousand people. You're gonna put me in a pub now, you son of a bitch! Oh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> um, it is June. Yeah, it's June third to the fifth. No. Yeah, I guess yeah. you're not coming up back up that quick. Yeah, probably not. So, dude, it's fucking you're you're coming up, dude. I'm really fucking excited. Uh, it's, it's gonna be awesome, and I want to turn to something monthly. 
Okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how this one goes. I know you're a hard guy to commit to shit, but I'd like to. But anyway, fucking let's plug the shit of this. It's going to be fucking awesome, right? If you want to come, it's May 22nd. Eight, I was going to say we split it. We do a 7 and 9. But just for this one, we'll do a fucking 8 o'clock one. May 22nd. Very limited number of tickets. They're almost. It's almost half sold out. Uh, that's pretty good for because we haven't really mentioned it. No, it hasn't been pushed at all. So it's going to sell out. Uh, you get your tickets. Um, you can at mal- www.malcolmxxxl.com. It's at the bottom, or if you go to uh, my uh, the Blow Our website, there's little uh, ads there for it. There you can just there, you can link through to it there. Um, yeah, and, and uh, get your tickets quick. It's it is going to sell out. You there was a possibility you weren't going to do the show unless it sold out. And it looks like we're not going to have that problem. It looks like it's going to be. Uh, it's gonna looks be like I'll be. Looks like I'll be there. The sad thing is, there's gonna be no tickets at the door for this one. You're gonna have to buy tickets because it does look like it's gonna be sold out. Yep, and and I'm bringing something embarrassing. So, it, 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 twenty dollars is a small price to pay and to watch me shamed. A, and you're gonna be leaving <laughs> with a bunch of Gretzky wine. Leaving with Gretzky wine and yeah. the courage, my love, girls on either arm. <laughs> All right. Well, you got anything to plug? You got anything to? Uh, uh nope. Uh, I mean, unless you, uh, well, you I don't know. I always figure like I mean they probably have most of them have it, but anybody who doesn't have your Twitter, uh, Brian Walt Q is our Twitter, and uh, Bandcamp dot com. Tell them Steve Dave. I mean, I'm sure that if if you're listening and you already listen to Tell Him Steve Dave, you know it. And if you don't listen to Tell Him Steve Dave, there's no way you're gonna fucking pay for the episodes anyway. So. I don't know. Tell him Steve Dave is my favorite of the Smodcast podcast. Come on. Uh, how could it not be? It's With true. the magic that we bring on a weekly basis. We bring the magic. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your magic, Brian Johnson. You can reach you us it. at blowhardbox at gmail.com. Uh, I'm at Facebook under Malcolm Ingram. It's a picture of a chicken with a little kid smoking a cigarette. I'm on Twitter under Malcolm Ingram, and it's the TCD symbol. The lightning bolt, the fucking Elvis symbol. Uh, blowhardbox at gmail.com again to reach us. Thank you very much. Come May 22nd. Come check us out at uh, the Underground Comedy Club. Me and Brian Johnson rocking it out. Do it. That was Blowhard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Fucking rock and roll. Oh, and Glow will be coming back for a quick review of, of uh, Fast Five. Hello. Welcome back. Yes, Malcolm. Mom to you, Malcolm. Oh, my God. Anyway, you went off to the movies. You went and saw The Fast Five. Fast. No. What? You know, we didn't go because my friend, I don't know which actor, but one of the actors in the movie she didn't like. So when we got there, when I got in the car, she had all the listings there. So that's what's going on. So we you didn't went. You to The Fast Five? No. What did you go see? We went to see something borrowed. Oh. And that's la- Blowhard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you and good I'm not talking about... Thank- that's Blowhard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you and good night. I was doing... Because I didn't want to talk about something borrowed. I wanted to talk about Fast Five. And I guess Vin Diesel is something... Or The Rock. I don't know who. I'm sure that she has got nothing against Paul Walker. Um... I I don't know the actor, so I don't well, know. Well, so you didn't hold your guns and be like, no, I want to see Fast Fucking Five. Eh, you want to see what? Fast Fucking Five. No, no, no. There's yeah. no such thing as that. Oh, yes, there is. No. There's a Fast Five. Oh, my God. But you could have, you, you, you could have, should have held your okay. ground. And so you like, know, okay. hey, you know no, what? No, 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 no. No, it wasn't important. It wasn't important. Malcolm, you and I can go see the other It would have been a more interesting, I was, I wanted to review Fast Five. The listeners okay. want to hear well, you. Okay. We've been sitting around waiting for you to get back, and you. And you want to hear my opinion about this other movie? All right, well, I guess. Okay, go. It's a very sweet love story. Yes, but it's a story about this couple who's engaged, and the fellow has uh, sleeps with this girl's best girlfriend, and more than once. So it's kind of touching, but at the same time, it's wrong, you know? It's kind of touching. It happens once, okay, but if it happens more than once, there's something wrong. 
So, so anyway, a, so end up they end up the engagement. Don't tell them what broken. happens. You don't want to spoil this. Okay. Okay. Anyway, but anyway, I thought so that was So an A wrong. for effort, but a, a D for moral fortitude. Exactly. All right. Glow. Uh, Glow gives it uh, a D, and is is that the most important rating? The moral. It was interesting, but it wasn't morally right. All right. And that was Blowhard, ladies and gentlemen. Blowhard.